Hello friends, welcome back. In previous tutorial, we studied about a CPU scheduling algorithm. Shortest job first. CPU scheduling algorithm, right? Shortest job first scheduling algorithm, uh, right? SGF. Now, this shortest job first uh, algorithm can be preemptive or uh, it can be non preemptive. So when this uh, shortest job first scheduling algorithm is non preemptive then what happens once the CPU is allocated to the process right then that CPU is not taken away from the process until this process completes its CPU bust right. So what happens once the CPU is allocated to the process then CPU is not taken away from that process before the completion of its CPU bust right. But what happens in the case of a preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm? In this case, what happens? Suppose uh, the CPU is allocated to the process P1, right? And uh, after uh, some time, a process P2 is arrived in ready queue, right? And uh, uh, the process P1 is executing its CPU bust, and remaining time for that CPU bust is greater than the next CPU bus time of process P2 right so in this case uh, what happens the CPU will be taken away from uh, process P1 and it will be given to process P2 right so what happens in preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm suppose uh, process P1 is executing some uh, CPU bust right process P1 is executing its CPU bust right and uh, another process p2 has arrived in ready queue right and uh, in for this uh, process p2 its uh, next cpu bus time right is uh, smaller than the remaining time for uh, the cpu bust which uh, process p1 is currently executing then what happens in this case the cpu will be taken away from the process p1 and it will be given to process p2 right so now see these uh, four processes P1, P2, P3 and P4. This is their arrival time 0, 1, 2, 3 right and uh, this is their next CPU bus time right. Now we will see how this preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm works right. Uh, this preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm is also called shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm right. Now see at time 0 right this process P1 uh, is there in ready queue right at time 0 oh, there is only one process in ready queue that is process P1 right see the arrival time of uh, process P1 the arrival time of process P1 is 0 right the arrival time uh, of other processes P2, P3 and P4 are 1, 2 and 3. Right. So at time 0 there is only one process in the ready queue that is process P1. Right. So the CPU will be allocated to the process P1. Right. So CPU is allocated to the process P1. At time 1. Right. This process P2 has arrived in ready queue. Right. And what happens for this process P2? Its next CPU bust time is 4 its uh, next CPU bus time is 4. Now this uh, process P1 is currently executing some uh, CPU bust right and uh, at time the remaining time of that CPU bust is 7 right because the bust time of uh, that CPU bust right is 8 right that CPU bus time is 8 which the process P1 is executing but uh, at time 1 right because one unit of time has been completed so the remaining time for CPU burst which the process P1 is currently executing is 7 right and uh, the next CPU burst time of process P2 is 4 right so it is a preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm so in this case what happens since uh, you, you can see that for process uh, P2 right the next CPU bus time of uh, 
process P2 is smaller than the remaining uh, time for the CPU burst which is the process P1 is currently executing. So the CPU will be taken away from process P1 and it will be given to process P2 right in preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm but this will not happen in non preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm right in that case process p1 will be allowed to complete its cpu bust which it currently executing but it will not happen in preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm so the cpu is allocated to process p2 at time 1 right now what happens at time 2 this process p3 has arrived in ready queue right its next cpu bus time is 9 right so uh, at time 2 what happens the remaining uh, time for the cpu burst which uh, the currently we process p2 is executing will be 3 right 4 minus 1 is 3 right so it is smaller than the next CPU bus time of process P3. So uh, CPU will not be taken away from process P2, right? So at uh, time uh, three, this process P4 has arrived in ready queue, right? Its next CPU bus time is five, right? And uh, this next CPU bus time of process P4 is more than the remaining time of a CPU bus which a process P2 is executing. So this uh, CPU will not be taken away from the process P2, right? Now see this uh, uh, this uh, CPU bus which process P2 is executing. Its uh, time is four, right? and it is given uh, cpu is given to process p2 at time 1 right so at time 3 right so at time 3 what happens two units of time has been completed so the remaining time for this cpu burst is only two units which is smaller than the next cpu burst time of process p4 right so the CPU will not be taken away from process P2, right? So the pre process P2 will be allowed to complete its CPU bust, right? So CPU bust time of uh, this uh, CPU bust is four, right? So after four units of time, CPU will be taken away from process P2. So at time five, this process P2 will leave the CPU. So at time 5, there are three processes in the ready queue, P1, P3 and P4, right? For process P1, the remaining time of CPU burst is 7, right? Actually, the CPU burst time was 8, but here one unit of time has been completed for that CPU burst. So the remaining time for this CPU burst is 7, right? Now another process in RADIQ is P3 and another one is P4. Their CPU bus time or we, I can say next CPU bus time is 9 and 5, right? So the smallest time, right? The smallest CPU bus time is for process P4, that is 5, right? So the process P4 will be allocated the CPU. Now process P4 will keep the CPU for next 5 units of time, right? So at time 10 process P4 will leave the CPU, right? Now only two processes are there in the ready queue P1 and P3, right? So the remaining uh, CPU bus time for process P1 is 7, right? And uh, next CPU bus time for process P3 is 9. So the process P1 is having a smallest uh, CPU bus time remaining. So process P1 will be allocated the CPU. Process P1 will keep the CPU for next 7 unit of times. So at time 17 process P1 will release the CPU. Now there is only one process in the ready queue that is P3. 
so the cpu will be allocated to the process p3 right its uh, cpu bus time is 9 right so it will keep the cpu for next 9 unit of times right at time 26 this process p3 will release the cpu right now see this process p3 this uh, process p3 has started its execution at time 70 and this process p3 has arrived at time 2 right so it has spent 15 units of time right 17 minus 2 units of time in radi queue so its waiting time is 15 right because it is started at time 17 and it has arrived at time 2 so 17 minus 2 is 15 so the waiting time of process p3 is 15 now see this process p4 right uh, this process p4 has started at time 5 and it has arrived at time 3 right so its waiting time is 5 minus 3 equal to 2 units of time right so what is the average waiting time now let us see the waiting time of uh, these uh, processes p1 p2 p3 and p4 now see this uh, process p1 right it has arrived at time 0 right now see there it has spent this much time in ready queue process p1 has spent this much time in ready queue that is 10 minus 1 units in ready queue so the waiting time of process p1 is 9 units of time now see the waiting time of process p2 now p2 has a start its execution at time 1 and p2 has arrived at time 1 right so how much time unit it has waited it is 1 minus 1 equal to 0 so the waiting time of process p2 is 0 right it has started its execution at time 1 and its arrival time was 1 so it has not waited at all right process p2 has not spent any time in ready queue so its waiting time is 0 so what is the average waiting time the average waiting time is 9 plus 0 plus 2 plus 15 by 4 right this is the average waiting time 9 plus 0 plus 2 plus 15 by 4 and it is equal to 26 by 4 right and it is equal to 6.5 units of time so the average waiting time in this uh, preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm is 6.5 units of time.